My name is Phil Lidgerton, owner of buildingmaterials.co.uk. I would firstly like to thank you for investing in this educational video. If after watching you have further questions or require additional clarification, please feel free to contact one of our experienced representatives seven days a week from 7am to 9pm. It's easy. By phone, call us on 0845 1133 848. By email, use the contact us form on the site or email directly to sales at buildingmaterials.co.uk. You can also fax us on 0845 1133949. Now please sit back and enjoy and can I suggest you watch till the end where I will show you how to get some extra discount off the website prices. An MF sealing system is suitable for most internal dry lining applications. The fully concealed grid and sealing lining can be used in conjunction with plasterboard to create a seamless appearance. Step 1. Setting the ceiling level. As with everything, getting the foundation right is an important part of completing any task. With this in mind, ensuring the ceiling is level and that the required height is the first task. Using a laser, spirit or water level, mark on your wall the required height and replicate this on all remaining walls. Step 2. Installing the MF6A trim. The purpose of the MF6A trim is to hold in position the MF5 and to provide a finish to the wall for your plasterboard. It should be attached to each wall at the required level using an appropriate fixing such as a drywall screw, plastic hammer fix or metal nailing. The fixing should be centered at no more than 600 mm centers. Step 3. Creating the hangers. Cut the MF17 suspension angle to the top of the MF6A. So, for instance, if the MF6A is 450mm from the void, then make the angles 450mm long. Drill a hole in one end and attach the MF16 angle bracket using the MF15 nut and bolt. Step 4. Installing the hangers. The suspension hangers take all the way to the ceiling and the layout of the hangers need to be planned in advance. The first fixing point needs to be a maximum of 450mm from the wall and this will be your starting point. Once marked, take an appropriate fixing and attach your hanger to the void. The additional fixing points are then placed at a maximum of 1200mm centres in each direction. All fixing points adjacent to walls must not be any more than 450mm on all walls. As a final check, ensure each fixing is tightened and pull it to ensure it is fixed correctly. Step 5. Installing the MF7. Offer the MF7 up to the hanger with one edge resting on the MF6A. Attach the MF7 to the hanger and clamp to hold position. When you're happy it is level and in position, fix using an MF20 wafer tech screw. Continue this installation until you have rows of channels all fixed into position. Step 6. Installing the MF5. Clip one end of the MF5 into the MF6 at a right angle and attach the MF7 channel already installed and offer up to the underside of the MF7. Place an MF9 clip over the back of the MF7 and clip it onto the MF5. To make this task easier, squeeze together gently the MF5 and use a second MF9 clip to drag it round and into place. Make sure you hear this snap into place and the leg of the clip is tightly located as shown. Continue this process by placing additional MF5 sections parallel to the others. The first MF5 should be placed a maximum of 150mm from the parallel wall and 450mm from the next MF5 if using 1800 by 900 plasterboard. Step 7. Extending the MF5 to a wall. It's likely that the MF5 will not stretch to the exact width of the wall and you will have to join two pieces together. Take a measure from the wall and add an additional 250 millimeters. Cut the MF5 using a suitable tool and place in position and fix with an MF20 tech screw. Step eight, extending the MF7. It is likely that the MF7 will not stretch to the exact width of the wall and you will have to join two pieces together. Take a measure of the length required and add an additional 250 millimeters. Clamp this into position and fix with the MF20 wafer tech screws. Step 9. Fixing the MF5 to the MF6A. You should end up with a metal framework as shown. Double check each MF9 clip is tightly secured and that each MF5 is parallel with the next and at 450mm centres. 
you can then secure the MF5 into the MF6A with an MF20 tech screw. This should be done on every fixing point. Step 10. Fixing the boards. Take a measure from the edge of the wall to the centre of the MF5. Mark and cut the board to the correct size. Using a helper, offer the board up to the metal framework and begin installing the MF14 25mm drywall screws through the plaster board and into the MF5. Continue down the length of the board at a maximum of 300mm centres. Continue fitting all the boards until the framework is completely covered. Step 11. Insulation can be easily fitted to provide additional acoustic and fire performance. Step 12. An additional layer of plasterboard can be fitted to further increase the performance of the ceiling simply by following the rules for a single board, staggering the joints so the boards overlap. After skimming the ceiling, you may require access to services behind it. In that case, fitting a plastic access panel is a cheap and easy method. Mark on the plasterboard where you want the panel to be and cut a hole slightly bigger than the framework of the panel, being careful not to damage any of the steel framework behind. Using adhesive, apply a bead around the edge of the frame and fix into place. Door can then be opened to provide full access to the services behind the ceiling and the panel can now be painted to provide a smooth and clean finish. Hi, thanks for taking time to watch the instructional video. If you want your extra discount that I mentioned earlier, please call us on 0845 888 or email sales at buildingmaterials.co.uk and ask for your video discount voucher. It will be emailed directly to you, it can be used any time in the next seven days. And finally, if you want to get in touch with me directly with any questions, suggestions for the site, or want to chat, my email address is phil at buildingmaterials.co.uk. I look forward to hearing from you soon.